Yeah, can you feel it? Can you feel it in the air? Ding dong, spring training's dead. And so is my beard. A very exciting Monday here on Evan and Tiki. You just heard the Yankees defeat the Mets. The Mets are done with spring training. They finished 15 and 14. The Yankees have one more game to play in Mexico. And then it's on to Thursday. Opening day 2024. We'll get into the baseball a little bit later on, including Shohei Otani, who's sort of going to meet the media in a couple of hours. We'll hear what he has to say as he's trying to make sure we're not witnessing the biggest scandal arguably in sports history. John Mara spoke to the media earlier today. We'll get into what he had to say. And coming up at 4.30 in just one hour, I fulfill the last part of my deed to get rid of this disgusting beard, and that is shaving half of it off. I've gotten used to you with the beard, Ev. Well, guess I- what? <laughs> It's over! I've actually gotten used to you with the painted beard. Ah, ah. So looking at you right now, it kind of feels odd. Is it? It does. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm waiting for like a color to be like, like very bright in my face. And I'm not seeing it right now. Well, go, what you'll get instead is in one hour, I'll shave half my face. So you'll get that instead. You're not gonna, don't do it. I'm going to do it because this it. gets me out of the beard. I've been building this up for three weeks. It's over. And in one hour, you all get to say goodbye to my beard together. But let's start off in a place where I didn't think I would be annoyed on this beautiful Monday. (laughs) Annoyed? Yeah, I found myself annoyed. I found myself with a grievance against the head coach of the New York football Jets, Robert Sala. Today is a very simple day in NFL land. It's the annual league meeting in Orlando, and that's why a little bit later on, we'll analyze some of the things John Mara had to say, some of the things Joe Douglas had to say, some interesting things. Usually things that aren't going to just piss you off. Okay. But Robert Sala met the media for 30 long minutes. And my guy Brian Costello asked him a very basic question with a very basic answer. And instead of saying what needed to be said about the New York Jets in 2024, Robert Sala showed absolutely no guts. (laughs) Take a listen to the question from Brian Costello and the gutless answer from our head coach. Is this, Robert, is this a season where maybe short of the playoffs is a failure? Um, I'll never say that. You know, it's, uh, you'll never want to stop it right you know, there. Like, I'll ne- you'll never say that. Brian said, if you don't make the playoffs, is this season a failure? Very simple. And all you've got to say, Coach, when you've been here for now, how many years? 21, 22, 23. This is your fourth year here. You've had nothing but losing seasons. All you've got to say is, yeah. In fact, Brian, I, that's a dumb question. Of course it's a failure. That's the answer. Yeah, but what happens to a quarterback get hurt or you lose a certain piece of your defense, whatever whatever the issue might be. So you can't ever predict and set ultimatums. But I, here's the thing, Ev. You know this as well as I do, as well as Lugie and Sean and everybody within our listening voice. Really, not even you know, I'd be listening to us and know the fact if the Jets don't make the playoffs, this this staff is not going to be here another year. Oh. That's like that's kind of obvious, isn't it? Isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, it is. oh, is it? Of course it is. I agree with you. Then why can't the coach say it? Because you never want to put yourself on the hot seat. Oh, really? You can you can be put on the hot seat, but Jakey. you're never going to say. Guess what? If you don't like my job that I'm doing, and we don't make the playoffs, well, fire me. I'll gladly walk out that door. Nobody's going to say oh, that. No one's going to say that, Tiki Barber. You know, I know about your history in the NFL. I know about some of the teams you played on, as Mm -hmm. does everyone in the audience. When I think of guts, when I think of growing a pair, when I think of putting all your chips in the middle of the table. (laughs) Center. Center of the table. I think of a head coach that, as we look back 20-plus years later, I think we all have a pretty good feeling for. And that is, of course, your former head coach, Jim Fossil. Of course. So Jim Fossil, in the middle of the season, did exactly what Robert Sala needed to do today. Have some guts and say what we already know. Of course it's a failure if we don't make the playoffs. Your guy, Jim Fossil, put it all in the middle of the right. table. It's a, it's, a, it's the same fruit basket. It's not the same fruit, though. right? What, what Jim was doing, because we were starting to play really poorly, and he knew he was fired. Mm-hmm. Like If we don't win three more games or five more games, whatever it is, he is out the door. Right? They were trying to get rid of him for a couple of years. If he doesn't turn it around, then he's fired. So I actually, whenever I think back on that that moment, after we lost to the Detroit Lions, I believe it was, it was genius because no matter what happens, he's fine. Because if, if we stink, he's fired. Right. He, he knew it. If, if we turn it around, he looks like a genius. And that's exactly what happened. And by the way, him saying it is what helped turn us around. 
And so I don't think that Robert Sala, you know, fast forward 26, 20, whatever it is, years later, uh, I don't think that Robert Sala is at that point where he can say definitively, I know what my team is, because they haven't seen most of these guys. I mean, Mike Williams is new, and um, and and uh, Tyron Smith is new, and John Simpson is new, and Morgan Moses, and on the Kinlaw. Everybody, like, the some pieces that are important are new. You haven't seen them yet. So the last thing you can do is say with confidence, if these guys don't perform, then I should be fired. You can't say that yet. Jim could say it, because we're middle of the season. I don't think Coach Salah can say that. Yeah, yet. but he, the reason he can say it and he needed to say it is exactly what you said at the top, which is we all know if the Jets don't make the playoffs this mm-hmm. year, they're all gone. She already know that the question Brian asked, which is such a layup, yeah, but what if has it, an obvious but answer, what if, so just give it. What if an extenuating circumstance happens? Like what? What if all of a sudden Zach Wilson has to be your starting Zach quarterback? Because seemingly they can't trade him. Oh, and so they're, don't do this. And they're, they're open to keeping him on the <laughs> team. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> But let's just say for whatever reason he yeah. happens to be your starting quarterback and you're and he's good enough, but not quite good enough. So you're you're nine and eight, but missed the playoffs by a game. Yeah. All right. And yeah. then, and it, it, but you did a really good job under the adverse circumstances for because for whatever reason, mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers isn't playing and Zach Wilson is your quarterback. Right? Shouldn't that deserve another year? So I, that see I, so so when you start digging into the details, logic tells you. You can't just say if I, we don't make the playoffs, then I shouldn't be here anymore because it doesn't. It doesn't play in his mind. It might play in our minds, but it doesn't play in his mind. Yeah, but his mind is wrong. Like that layout you just put of, hey, how about this crazy scenario where somehow Zach is still on the team, which I don't buy, despite what Joe does. Douglas said <laughs> today. I don't either. By More the way, on that a little bit later. But I just brought it up because Joe Douglas said it. I, I get <laughs> it. So the third string quarterback takes over. The Jets win nine games. They miss the playoffs on the last day of the year, but it's really, really close. Does Robert Sala keep his job? First of all, those circumstances you painted are like a fairy tale. Mm. And second of all, the answer is no. Like he still loses his job. That's why Robert Sala needed to grow a pair today. He didn't, and it's not even growing a pair. Because the truth is, all you're saying is what's obvious. All you're saying is the red meat that me as a Jet fan, and I think most Jet fans want to hear, which is, yes, I understand. Yes, Jet fans, I get it. We have to win this year. There are no excuses. And the truth is, Tiki, there aren't any excuses. It's not a quarterback injury. It's not an injury to the offensive line. It's nothing. You will not survive if the Jets don't make the playoffs. So what annoyed me about this, and I asked my fellow Jet fans, do you not agree with me? Do you not want to hear Robert Sala just say the obvious? And by the way, if he said the obvious today, I'd move on very quickly. Mm -hmm. I'd say, good, I'm glad he said what needed to be said. This is one of those things where you can only fumble it. You don't get extra marks for saying what's obvious, but you can fumble it. And for him to come out there and say, oh, gee, I would never say that, that's a gutless answer, dude. <laughs> come on, man. And yeah, I, I get it, though. I know I know why you're upset, because as a fan, you want to say there's an urgency. Because we all know there is. Of, of I'm not course. making it up. I mean, we know it because of what they've done in free agency. They go, Aaron Rodgers is 40 years old. We know this. They go and get uh, Tyron Smith, who's not old, but he's been hurt. And so he's, I don't want to say he's on the back end of his career, but he's been banged up, right? He's not in his physical prime, even though he could still play really well. Morgan Moses, um, it feels like he is a, a like a, a like this sturdy like bandage you're putting on at right tackle. Uh, could it help? Sure. Uh, was it guaranteed? I don't know. And so I think there's just question marks about this team, despite the enthusiasm with which you went, went about free agency, right? You have all of the pieces. Offensively, defensively, you know, hope, hoping, uh, hopefully, coaching wise, to have a successful team. Most importantly, led by Aaron Rodgers, and he's and if he's healthy, you're going to be excited. But all that still has to happen. It's still like five months away. I get that. It's still so far away before you're actually well, in the like nit and gritty of this thing. And what if? They are one of these countless teams we've seen that goes ten and seven, or dare I say, eleven and six, like that Patriot year, and miss the playoffs. Don't, don't yeah. excuse this. No, Come no, on, because but, that's but, the truth. The, every coach has yes. to account for that. Yeah, the you, rest of the league around them. That's that's and the AFC is tight, and it's going to be hard. The division is going to be hard, and so like you can't just say if we don't if we play great and circumstances just fall against us and we don't make the playoffs, fire me. You can't say that because you could still be building something. I think that's what's ultimately. The 
like the goal is to build something. No, no, but wait, build building, something here's more the problem, sustainable Batiki, than what's been there. The problem with the building something statement is that the quarterback is forty. The left tackle they just he signed wants to is play getting. More years. I get no, no. I get that, and I appreciate that. But he is still forty. Okay, so when we talk about building something, building facts. something to me is getting to the postseason, making a run, and losing. Then you want to build on it. But to miss the playoffs in an NFL world in which making the playoffs is far different than what it was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. like that's not something I'd be able to walk away from and say, oh, we're building something. No. If they miss the playoffs this year, other than these far out circumstances you're trying to describe, they're all gone. Yeah. I think I don't. So just say it. It's got to be. And if you don't want to use by, the by word the fire, just answer Brian's if, question. Yes, it would be unacceptable to miss the playoffs. If, That's all you got to say. If the Jets look dysfunctional, then obviously they're going to be fired. But I think it's how they look missing the playoffs that's going to matter. It, 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 it can't not. Here's it my, has to. Here's the problem. Robert Sala is a nice man. Robert Sala is a great defensive mind, but there's a couple of issues we've learned about from Robert Sala. One of which, which I haven't brought up, but I've mentioned in the past, is does he even give a rat's ass about the offense? That's number Mm -hmm. one. But number two is the idea that he's an excuse maker. I don't like excuse makers. Like when I screw something up at home, you know what I do? Mm -hmm. I look into my wife's eyes and I say, I screwed up. Here's how I screwed up. Even around here. If I screw up, I will say I screwed up. It feels like Robert Sala, whether it's his private text to Joe, is always looking about excuses. Mm-hmm. He's always looking for why this didn't happen. Why do you why why, why do you say that? Because of the quarterback excuse from last year that he said privately, and by the way, then said publicly the whole how many teams win with their backup quarterback. True. By the way, teams made the playoffs last year with a backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. I've seen a team win a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback. It's a lame ass excuse. Right. It is a lame ass excuse, but I think he's also trying not to crush. A quarterback that's currently on his team. <laughs> that's what that comes down to. Uh, that's not what he. That's not I mean, what. Think think about how he should have said that. Like if you're being real, like real for real, real. Let's let's have a conversation about why things went wrong. Yeah, because our our starting quarterback for most of the season was not good. Mm-hmm. You can't say that about a kid that's still on your team, right? Like you still got to protect Zach in some way as the as his. Still current head coach. No, but I don't even think he should have gone that route. The route is our offense as a whole, not just that quarterback, wasn't good enough. Because while the quarterback was inadequate last year, yeah. it wasn't just that. No, true. It, the offensive line was bad. And there was a lot of felt, drops. There was a lot of things that weren't, weren't, weren't right. But it's just hard to do that and throw guys under the bus. Dude, all It's the I'm, last thing you want from a head coach. Then throw yourself under the bus. Brian Costello, who's a wonderful reporter, asked a basic question that all of us as Jet fans would want to throw at the coach, too, which is, hey, you agree with us. (laughs) You agree with the mob of Jet fans that say you better win this season. Right, coach? And instead, he and I even cut off the answer. We'll play his full answer if you want the full context. I cut it off because his first response to it was disgusting. Oh, I couldn't say that. You couldn't say that. Are you kidding me? If you don't make the playoffs in your fourth year here with all this talent on the roster, with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, you're telling me you deserve another year? Here's the full answer no. from the head coach of the New York Jets, Robert Sala. Is this, Robert, is this a season where maybe short of the playoffs is a failure? Um, I'll never say that. You know, it's, uh, you know, like I said, we're put your head down. Do the best you can. Put your work in, and uh, obviously, we all want to win games. We all want to go to the playoffs. We all want to win championships. That's that's been the goal since the day we walked in here, and uh, felt like we were going to have that opportunity last year. It didn't happen, and um, this year is about picking ourselves up, putting our heads down, and just working. That's all fine. Put your head down and work. That's a vanilla BS answer. It is a failure. I'll help you out, Coach. And I think every Jet fan will help you out on the middle of March in 2024, months before Mm. kickoff. If you don't make the playoffs, the season is a failure. Mm. Period. You could write all these different scripts on how you get there, but it is a failure. And I'll take it a step further because you weren't even asked about being fired. That's something we're kind of surmising. Mm. You're going to be fired. Yeah, failure and fired are basically the same word, just different letters. So I think <laughs> is that true? <laughs> I think that here's what I hear. Let's just let's let's pause for a second. Go ahead. So when you're the head of an organization and you're constantly in front of the same media, same guys like Costello and others that are constantly on either on the beat or covering for whatever reason, like you. 
if over time you start to develop a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. So you can have kind of off the cuff conversations. You can you can say something in a certain way that has some levity to it. You can and and you can disarm the question. I feel like where Robert Sala, Coach Sala is right now, is that he's like he feels like he's being attacked all the time. And so his ability to hear a question and give like the obvious answer, but make it non-serious is hard. <sighs> but I'm being I'm being serious. This is a basic tenet of the job. Is I, it not? I understand that, but think think about what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. So like I've been in media for so long, been in New York for 27, eight years, whatever it is, it is now. I've been here 27 years and been worked on the media, been in sports. I, I feel like I can have conversations with people and be serious, but at the same time be like humorous mm. and bring and bring it down, like take the edge off of it. Coach Sala, because he's he feels like he's so much under pressure and under fire, he feels like he can't afford to do that. And so as a result, the only way he can answer Brian Costello's question is serious. Right? He can't say the obvious and put levity on it. Like, hey coach, you think uh, these, if you don't make the playoffs, the season's a failure? I mean, if we don't make the playoffs, none of us are gonna be here. Right? Great answer, by the way. <laughs> right? Like something simple like that. It's, yes. It's obviously truthful, but you're obviously also joking. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so Robert Coach Sala, he's he he's not there yet because he hasn't had the success, right? As a as a coach to be able to be at that level. And so this is where I have to defend him because he I know where he is and I know where why he can't answer the question like you want him to answer. Like I would answer it if someone asked me a question like that. And it's just, it takes success. Success cures everything. And as soon as he has that, I, I promise you, because I, I have conversations with Coach Sala, he'll be funny, mm -hmm. right? He'll be himself. He'll feel like he's not on edge. Right now, I feel like he's on edge. He, and it makes it hard to answer these serious questions without being threatened. Well, it, it's almost like he's being defensive. Yes. And the truth yes. is... Just yes. be honest. Like, the New York Jets, and I know that coming into this upcoming season may be slightly different than a year earlier where there was so much hype oh, and there was hype. hard knocks, but there's still going to be hype. Like, the Jet over-under number is still going to be high. Their odds at winning a championship, while certainly not going to be the favorites, they're in the mix as a team. Yeah, Those expectations are still kind of there. And so as a head coach that has never sniffed the playoffs, as a head coach that has not even sniffed a 500 season Understand what's on the line this year. Understand the importance of winning. Because the one thing none of us want to hear as Jet fans, we are done with the excuses. We're done with it. Joe Douglas and Robert Sala have been here for a while. And I love what they've done this offseason. And I'm super excited for the year. I'm happy. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. But don't try to dodge what's obvious. And what's obvious, Coach, is that, yes, if you're not in the postseason, it's a failure. It's a massive failure. They have got to be playing postseason football in the middle of January. And if it doesn't happen, and I don't care why, I don't care how many guys get hurt mm -hmm. or what happens or whatever circumstances we can't even imagine. If they're not playing postseason football, they're all gone. And we're going to all start over. Own it and understand it. Because that's the reality you're facing going into this season. Is it important for Robert Sala to address what we all know? We'll get to your calls coming up, 877-337-6666. Plus, John Mara spoke to the media, and it seems like he took a direct shot at the head coach, Brian Dable. <laughs> we'll examine that coming up. I'll shave my beard coming up at 430, and we'll mix in some baseball as the show rolls on, including Shohei Otani speaking to the media for the first time since this potential scandal started to come out.